The routing remote access service is, is a very full-featured service. Um, not only do, can you do NAT and VPN and, and dial-up servers, um, it functions as a full-blown router, the router protocols. We'll open up some of the bits and pieces here and take a quick look at them. Um, what we're interested in is under IP version 4, but I guess let's start out here. Network interfaces, here's my private and my public interfaces, and I can see you know, where they are and which one's connected. Let me kind of scroll this over a little bit. And I'm going to go down here to ports. And you can see the ports that you can connect under. <coughs> Here's SSTP ports. And every each one of these has the capability to host a connection. And then that way it would become active when someone dials in over that port. So in this case, here's my secure socket tunneling uh, protocol. Let's go down scroll down here and we'll find some PPTP. Here's my point-to-point -point tunneling protocol for older machines. And then here are some more sockets waiting for connections layer 2 tunneling protocol, L2TP. So it depends on which type of connection I would select with my client. Now I can see here that I have no remote access clients connected yet. So um, let's keep moving on down. If I had configured a remote access policy, I'm going to go ahead and do this. We'll launch NPS. And I'll show you what, what I'm talking about when we you know, talk about a remote access policy. Um, Give it a moment to add the snap in. Now there's two ways to do this. I'll do both. Only one way is required, but I'll do both just to show you. There are default uh, remote access policies and we could always create a new one. If I wanted to create a new one, I could right click and say new. And I could give it a new policy name. And we'll call it policy. We'll try to be a little more descriptive there. New remote access policy. I guess it was redundant, wrap policy, but do you have a wrap policy? Um, okay, and then we could add, in this case, different users and groups that would be governed by that. Um, there we go, domain users. Okay, yeah, a little bit less, a little, little bit too much power there. All right, domain users, and let's go ahead. Um, we can choose by default whether access will be granted or denied. <coughs> and we can apply multiple policies. I'll just go with the defaults. We can set the time people can dial in, when they're allowed to dial in, when they're not allowed to dial in. In this, in, in this case, this would be my new wrap policy. Now I'm going to delete that. I'm going to use the default policy that's in place. And I want to show you something. Um, what you want to do is, by default, it's to be more secure, it's set to deny access but I'm going to set it to grant access in this case and I'll click OK and you can have multiple policies applied and the last policy applied is you know provides the end result here um, I want to go and enable this and I want to say grant access and that'll be enough because by default user accounts and Active Directory are configured to control access through a remote access policy so our network policies here but just to show you the other way of doing things, let's go to Active Directory Users and Computers and in Active Directory Users and Computers let me go find my administrator account. Here's what we'll use to connect here. If I go to the Dial-In tab notice my options here. Control access to MPS network policy um, I can deny access, which would override that policy which was denying but is now granting access. Or if I had not changed that network policy, I could check allow access and that would allow me access to dial in to my VPN server. Let's just look at a few more things. Um, I'm going to go down and click on or select the IP version 4 node here in my management console. And just look at some of the options here um, under general. I could add new interfaces if I had added a you know a new NIC card in my multi-home machine. I could add routing protocols, dynamic routing protocols for routing. Um, I can get a little bit of information. Let me pull this back here and look at the IP addresses and the incoming and outgoing bytes and any kind of filtering that's going on on my interfaces there. I can go to static routes and if I wanted to add a new static route, I could and actually add that static route entry to my routing table. I can also show my IP routing table, equivalent to a show IP route command from the command prompt. You can see where my traffic's going. 
um, I can configure a DHCP relay agent. Now, if I did this, remember a DHCP relay agent allows you to send DHCP broadcast traffic, which is normally defined, uh, you know, to a subnet and does not traverse a, a router. Um, it would allow you to send that to another subnet. Now, the exception is if your router is RFC 1542 compliant, it will allow DHCP bro discover broadcast to go from one subnet to another. Um, but in this instance, no. So um, we could set up a DHCP relay agent. And in that case, we could configure either one of these interfaces with the static IP, and it would listen, like say if I wanted to configure this interface, it would listen for a DHCP discover broadcasts. And the hop count threshold in this case by default is set to four, but it would relay those packets, and I've selected an interface. Let me go ahead and... Now in this case, I don't really want that, but... I would also want to configure it with the static IP, say it was 192.168.100.100, uh, 100, which is, it, that's not, that is my DHCP server, but it's also this server, so um, in this example, it's sort of useless because I'm relaying DHCP discovery request to myself, but uh, in other words, just pretend that that's another IP address of another DHCP server on a different subnet. Well, our relay agent would sit here on this subnet and listen for this DHCP discover broadcast, and when it heard it, it would send them to the IP address of a server on a, another subnet. It would have already in you know, its memory uh, that particular... <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this here, because I don't want a relay agent set up. I, in this case, I, I, I have a DHCP server on the subnet, but you understand that's what that would be used for, and that way that you could have a DHCP server that would serve more than one subnet through those relay agents and that relay agent service. Um, and in a group management protocol here, um, again, I could add new interfaces or group table. And then here's my network address translation. Let me go down here, and again, I could select my interfaces. And let me show you, here's where you can gain some access or control to the firewall. I can choose to enable NAT on this interface, address pull, services, and ports, choose what I allow or what I will not allow through. Um, you know, incoming and outgoing traffic. So there's a, a, a full selection of, of filtering that's capable <coughs> and a pretty good firewall that's installed with Network Address Translation or NAT when you install or configure NAT. Okay, now that we've gone through all these things, let's go ahead and uh, <coughs> let's go ahead and make a connection here. So we'll hop on over to our Vista uh, Ultimate Workstation and Client. <coughs> 